Thanks for dropping in. This week's design started out as an old woodworking project, years before I had even heard of 3D printers. As often happens, I didn't get very far before some other project distracted me. But abandoned projects are never truly gone. All this design needed was a different tool set in the right moment to grab my attention. This is a 3D printed modular dodecahedron maze. The 12 mazes that form each face connect to create a much larger labyrinth, one with no obvious beginning or end. The goal is to move a small ball bearing from wherever it happens to be through various checkpoints located at the center of each face. While there are very few dead ends, the maze is surprisingly devious. Half the maze is always hidden, and rotating the puzzle makes it very difficult to keep track of where you've already been. If you manage to memorize the layout, it can be easily scrambled by rearranging or substituting tiles. For all these intricate paths, the maze is very easy to print. The tiles that make up each side of the dodecahedron print flat, so there's no need for supports. To get the maze lines to really pop, I made a few filament swaps, but this is completely optional. You could leave the maze lines the same color as the base, or paint them after printing. The bottom of each tile is marked with an ID number, as well as a cheat sheet. This shows which entrances lead to dead ends, to checkpoints, or to other entrances. I switched out the filament here as well, but that's probably overkill. These markings only matter when assembling the maze. The 12 sides are held together with 20 corner brackets. To avoid supports, I printed these upright, like so. It looks a bit scary, but with decent bed adhesion, they won't fall over. If you're uncertain, a small brim will help that first layer really stick. That's all the 3D printed parts, but there are a few more pieces to cover. This maze is designed for 6mm ball bearings, but something smaller, like these 5mm ball magnets, will also work just fine. If you need to support a larger bearing, just scale up the model accordingly. To hold everything together, I'm using 60 10mm long M3 hex bolts. That's a lot of hardware, but you can pick up a box of 100 of these for under $8 US. If you prefer glue, that also works. Just keep in mind that you won't be able to rearrange the maze later. Finally, there's the clear plastic lid. These are cut from polycarbonate sheets. That's about 0.75 millimeters thick, or 1 32nd of an inch. I chose polycarbonate because it's super soft. You can even cut it with scissors. And that's good because I don't have a laser cutter or any skill with cutting glass or harder plastics. If you do have a laser cutter, I've set aside my jealousy and included the relevant SVG files, so you can spare your scissors. All right, let's build a maze. The first step is to lay out all the tiles and make sure our configuration won't create an impossible layout, unless that's what you're going for, of course. I'm going to begin with tile number 15. This is one of only two tiles that immediately branches out in all five directions. Using the cheat sheet built into the back of each tiles, it's pretty easy to follow the path as it winds around one hemisphere. But things get tricky when paths start crossing over from one half to the other. So I'm going to draw a few guidelines to make that easier to follow. Okay, after a lot of rearranging, that looks good. But I snuck in one minor curveball. Did you notice that tile 17 looked a little different than the rest? This is a skill-based tile. A small misstep will drop your ball off a ledge and into an earlier part of the maze, at which point you'll need to either retrace your steps or get back onto the ledge with some skillful maneuvering. Okay, it's time to bolt it together. First, we'll grab a bracket and attach it to the first tile. Now we'll slide on a clear lid and attach the remaining brackets to hold it into place. That's one face down. Now there's only 11 more to go. I found it easiest to assemble the two hemispheres separately. 
otherwise it's really easy to lose track of what tile goes where. Once those are done, don't forget to drop in the bearing before closing the maze up. And the build is done. At this point, you can just mindlessly work your way around the maze. It's kind of relaxing, really. But I want to set a specific challenge. A target checkpoint or series of checkpoints to roll to. For that, we need some way to distinguish one side from the other. You could do that by printing each side in a different color. In my case, though, it's a little too late for that. Or you could create a tiny magnetic marker and stick that to a bolt that indicates which side is your target. Magnets do make every project cooler, but for this print I decided to number the sides using these dry transfer decals. The text is large enough to read and small enough not to block the maze. Now I can just roll d12 to randomly pick my next checkpoint, or I can work my way up through the checkpoint sequentially, starting at 1 and going all the way to 12. Now that's a challenge that takes a while. Speaking of taking a while, this long abandoned project is finally complete. Maybe I'll dust off a few more ancient designs in future videos. But until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. It out as an old woodworking project, years before I'd even heard of a 3D printer. Magnets do make every 